In this episode, we're going to build a nice looking two story townhouse for Riverton's Miller, Mattis, and his wife Stoya. So, without any further ado, let's upgrade those hammers and start building. So, as usual, I've already sketched out the placement of our townhouse and patio area with core wood. That way I know exactly where the footprint goes and how it's going to set into the landscape. So now all we have to do is clear out the vegetation and the boulders and trim some trees and then we can get started with the foundation. Our foundation is going to be an 8 by 8 meter square made from stone 1 by 2 blocks with a wooden floor in the center. And we'll complete the first floor using stone 1 by 2 blocks, a total of 8 meters high, basically making a stone cube. And this is just a matter of personal preference, but I like to install the doors and windows after the box is built. It just makes things go a little faster for me. And we'll go ahead and put a door and a window in the front wall overlooking a nice little pond, and a window on the south wall with a nice view of the ocean. Now with our foundation up, we can start working on our second floor. Which just we're going to need some ironwood support. And also we want to have a 1 meter overhang on both sides and the rear. And here in the front we want to have a 2 meter overhang. So we're going to do that the same way that we do with our, when we do our overhang on our roofs. We're going to set two 1 meter beams like that. But here we're going to attach an ironwood beam at a 45 degree angle like that. Which will give us the support we'll need for our roof when we're finished. And we want to do this all the way around. And all the way around, we want to add some meter supports like this. Now we can add some dark wood trim. And on the end of these ironwood beams on the front, we want to add a temporary snap point. We also want to have some ironwood going through it. Just like that. I'll go ahead and cover that up. Same on the other side. Eh, we might not need these on the front. And going back to our ironwood, we want to go up 4 meters to get our, establish our wall height. Our roof isn't going to be too complicated. 
We're going to give it a 1 meter overhang on all four sides, along with 1 meter beams for support on the right and left sides of the frame to help support the roof pieces. We'll use wood to frame our roof using two 26 degree beams and one 45 degree beam on each side and also for the roof peak. When that's done, we just have to cover our frame with dark wood roof pieces. We'll start work on the second floor by adding a stairway and then filling in our space with wooden floor tiles. I also decided to delete the 1 meter support beams as I didn't think they were necessary, plus they poked through the floor a little bit. And I just made the walls solid for now, using half walls for the top and bottom rows and full walls in the center row. And then I added dark wood trim around the top of all four sides and down all four corners. Okay, now to fill in our eaves, we're going to take a 26 degree wall piece, I'm going to snap one there, and one there on each side. Then we're going to add our 45 degree beams, one on each side. And using half walls here, we're going to fill this in. And then we're going to fill this space in too. So we just want a triangle at the top. We're going to take one two meter pole, turn it at an angle like that, just for decorative touch. Then we'll take our 26 degree X piece and snap it there. That'll keep the bats out of our belfry. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. That's not too bad. Let's continue. Now here we'll go ahead and fill in our ceiling. Except here we're going to use the one by one floors. We want to leave a square hole in the center for our brazier. Here we will put one one meter pole there and one there. Put a 2 meter beam in there. And one brazier right in the center. Alright, it's time for some windows. Let's not start by putting a nice bay window here in the front. So we'll begin by putting 1 meter beams at a 45 degree angle here. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Here we'll change our trim pieces out. And now we can fill in our gap here. We'll 
fill this gap in with our one meter walls. Here we'll just free place some beams in so they're even with the inside of the wall there and they fill these gaps nicely. Here we'll put in a two meter pole but we'll turn it one click to the right and on this side we'll turn it one click to the left. Now we'll go ahead and put our crystal walls in. There, now we have a nice wide bay window. Gives us a nice view to the pond. It gives us a nice window. Let's do a couple more. Yeah, the ocean's too pretty not to have a window. Let's go ahead and make this window look like it's open. So maybe we'll have one side. It's open straight out like that. This side's more closed. A little bit of variety goes a long way. Maybe it's not that hot of a day, so all the windows will be open just a little bit. Just add some variety to your build. Except this window will be closed because the windmills are going to be pretty noisy. There, now we can dress it up with some trim. So we'll just go around with dark wood beams. Alright, to work on the downstairs some more, let's cut another doorway in over here. We'll go ahead and put in our regular door, which will then allow us to snap a, a gate right to the center. Just like that. Here let's add a little bit of dark wood trim down here too for these windows. Except here we'll use the archways. It gives a little different look. So 
So I'll go ahead and fill those in with some crystal. And here we'll go ahead and free place some dark wood beams. Just give our window sills a little bit of texture. And we'll also trim our doorways out. while using the dark wood arches. And we'll do a little bit of terrain manipulation. And from down here, we can also shift place some dark wood beams for our window sills up on the second floor. We're starting to take shape. Not looking too bad. And just to make this a little more visually interesting, turn our stone floor one click. We'll run this out about four wide. Sometimes you have to add a little bit of dirt. And we'll just snap these to the wall so we can fill it in. Get rid of our sketch. Don't need that anymore. We need a temporary snapping point. It looks like a plain stone patio. We'll need to put a little extension on it though. And on this side, we're going to extend this out. One more foundation. And here we want to put some stands for our windmills to sit on. So we're going to put four floors down like that. And we're going to do four more floors there. Just so we can be able to walk behind each of our mills. And we have a space in between to pick up our flower. And we're going to dress these up by putting half walls all the way around the outside. Now we can go ahead and set down our mills. And we want to have them so that the chutes all dump into the middle. We also need to put a little storage pantry in. So let's use one by one walls. So we can make a cabinet four meters wide. And we can put two iron chests in. Here we'll just shift place a one by one floor and carry that all the way across.
Okay, we'll put two more chests in. And then we'll just close it up with a couple of gates. It's one quick and easy storage cabinet. Of course, over here we need some steps. I'm going to add a railing, so all the way around on the bottom, I'm going to add just regular wood beams. And we can cover up that little jankiness with the wood. And here we're going to go ahead and use the iron walls. We're going to go all the way around. And on top of those, we're just going to put some, some dark wood beams down. That looks like a nice little patio. Let's dress this up. Okay, and Mattis is going to need an office to keep track of all the comings and goings of the mill. So we'll go ahead and start our desk right about there. Get a couple of temporary snap points. And here we'll need a temporary backer. Put that there. Now we can place this item stand in the center. Two of them like that. We'll go ahead and put our a sign there for our drawer. Put it in the center. And then we want to put a backer. Put it up against the side of the sign like that. Then we can place a new sign. Shift it in. So the drawer pull sticks out. They make nice drawers. Now we just need a top. There, we have a little custom desk that fits that space nicely. Of course he needs a desk protector. So we'll put a couple bunny skins down. Alright, here we need a mug. Maybe his water pitcher. Maybe he's counting out the day's receipts. Here we could use a nice little flower box. Keeps his office bright and cheery.
So on the inside item stands, we'll put some mage caps. Maybe some Jotun puffs. And on the outside, we'll put some turnips on. And seal it up with another item stand. And a turnip, of course. It adds a little splash of color, too. I always use a little bit of light. Always use a comfy chair. You could always use some banners, too. Since he makes flower here, let's go with the white ones. I'll we'll put a little artwork here in this wall. So we'll start with one item stand there, in the center. And we'll put one on each side with a little space in between. Then we'll go ahead and add some black and white tower shields. Then here we'll go ahead and free place a 2 meter pole on each side. And then on that, we'll just free place another 2 meter beam. One at the top and bottom. And we'll fix that so our gap's not so noticeable. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's make that look nicer. Yeah. And sticking with the white theme, let's put down some wolf rugs. And let's dress these steps up. It's not horrible, but it's just an office. Here we can extend this floor out a little bit. We can still get up and down. Yep. This looks like a nice place I want to sit and eat dinner. So we'll go ahead and put down a round table. Go ahead and give it some comfy chairs. Alright, now we can dress up our table. Maybe we'll put a flower box down. Yep, that looks pretty nice. Alright, in the center we'll have another Lazy Susan. Maybe with a jar, some condiments. Water pitcher is always a good thing. Of course we need our tray. Here, maybe Mattis is sitting down to a nice chicken dinner. It's got this mug. His wife's having a nice looking salad. Eating dinner with a nice view of the pond. Right here we'll put our safety railing in. There, now we won't fall down anymore. Here, over here we'll put a nice big bed. Here we'll need a nightstand. I stand with a nice little purple Care Bear nightlight. First we'll need a dresser, so let's go ahead and put one in. And we'll take our one by one walls, and free place it so it's even with the wall that we put down, and it sticks out a little bit. And this one we just want to place just there's a little overhang on the end. It's like that. Of course on the dresser we'll have some stuff like maybe some jars and bottles. Maybe it's where they keep their books. Like Tilting at Windmills, The Howling Miller, and Catch the Wind, A Book of Windmills. And you can't have books without 
book ends. We'll use some more Care Bear statues. We will separate the bedroom area with a shoji screen. So here we're going to temporarily place a beam on the top like that. We'll use our white banners and try to place it as close we can to the center. And we'll try to match up this side. Let's do another picture over here. Yeah, it's kind of nice. And here we'll put a little hutch. Which is just basically just a dresser with a shelf on top. Maybe on this shelf, Mattis keeps his old Frostner. Maybe some nice beer mugs. They might be collector's items. Maybe up here, they got some board games. Like Monopoly, the Valheim edition. And the kid's favorite, Hungry Hungry Oozers. Now here in the windowsill, let's put a flower box. Make this a wide one, about two signs wide. Here, we have a decent looking flower box now. Now the last thing we could do is put some shag carpeting in. Because everybody loves shag. Yeah, it looks nice and cozy up here now. It looks a little plain out here, so let's give our miller a little bit of furniture. Maybe we'll put a couple lawn chairs out here. And over here, Miller's got a pitcher. Gotta keep cool. Got this mug. Maybe even a snack. Now we're gonna need some crates. Cause he just got some barley in. So he's got a lot of work to do. There, just got shipment in from Otto's Grotto and Barley Farm. Of course, we need a little light. And this happens sometimes. You think you're done, and you notice he made a boo-boo, like... These banners on my shoji screen phase through the floor. So now we'll have to go and change that. There, it doesn't quite look as nice, but... It is what it is. And maybe here we'll put the Miller's Wife. Start with a 2 meter pole. Followed by an item stand. An armor stand. There. Here she is. Maybe she just set the table or enjoying a nice view, watching the necks. Here. And here we have Mattis. Maybe he's hard at work watching the wind blow. It turned out nice. And now to connect our new miller to our roadway, 
Sometimes when our roadways are really long like this one, I like to lay them out with the whisk torches. That way I don't get lost along the way. And we'll just use our pathing tool. And here we'll put one of our street lamps. I'll start by setting down two stone floors, marking the center of one and place a four meter dark wood pole on it. And free place a one by one stone block and snap a second one to it and then dress that up with one meter beams. Add a dark wood arch at the top. Add a temporary snap point for our 2 meter dark wood beam. Delete our temporary backer. Add a hanging brazier. And then finally add 4 certainly trophies for permanent lighting. In this episode, we built this nice looking two-story townhouse for our village miller, Mattis, and his wife. We gave him a nice looking office on the first floor. The second floor is nice and cozy living area with nice views of both the ocean and the water feature in the front. And finally, a nice patio for our miller to grind the village flower and hang out and watch the wind blow all day. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you won't miss any future episodes. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.